Well, a promise is a promise, and it's time to review the other Crossman multi-shot rifles. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This week it's the follow-on to the Crossman multi-shot Trailhawk that I reviewed a while ago. I must admit to liking the budget multi-shot Nitro piston brake barrels which was in walnut effect beach stock but the tactical look is also very popular right now and Crossman have dropped this multi-shot system into two other rifles the mission and the diamondback both of these come with a 4x32 starter scope which aren't as good as the scope that was on the Trailhawk I tested, and I would say they will get a junior or plinker started. But I personally would probably change that as soon as I could. A strange place to start a rifle review, but let's get any negatives out of the way first, and then on to the good stuff. Both of these are in black polymer, and with the more pistol grip bias, should tick the tactical box for those looking for a less traditional style. Stats them first. They are both, because I've got both of them, approximately 1170 millimeters or around 46 inches long, with the diamond back being approximately 10 millimeters shorter. Unscoped, they tip the scales at 3.37 kilograms or seven pounds, seven ounce, for the mission and 3.6 kilograms or seven pounds 15 ounces for the diamond back which isn't particularly heavy and despite that long barrel length they are nicely balanced the mission has a cut out skeletal style stock with ambidextrous cheek rest and rubberized rear there are cutouts along the forestock for effect and the stippling to the grip and forestock is in the one piece molding including the trigger guard the whole thing is simple and all weather functional it has the same trigger blade and in trigger safety as the trailhawk and after using this style for so many occasions this has become very familiar to me and quick and easy to operate in safe it completely locks the two-stage adjustable trigger this is a manual safety so no frustrations sometimes associated with an auto safety as with all the rifles in the multi-shot range they come pre-fitted with optional fixed open front and rear sights the rears of which are adjustable for elevation and windage the top has a standard dovetail rail fitting for the supplied scope and mounts or alternatively a higher magnification item with focus capabilities to try and get the best out of this all black fast loader. Loading the magazine is really simple and this 22 caliber they hold 10 rounds. Simply drop in your first pellet with the window painted, uh, pointing forwards, drop it in, hold it to make sure it doesn't fall out, rotate the magazine one notch in line with the arrow, takes you to number nine, drop in, continue all the way round and leave the last slot, which should be slot number zero, leave that empty, because you're gonna need that for it to fit into the front of the gun. From this point it's simply a case of breaking the barrel and the magazine will load a single pellet into the breech each and every time. They do only supply one magazine in the box but I'm sure additional ones are available if you need them and I can't imagine them being overly expensive. Let's just drop this over the chronograph then, shall we, to check out the power levels. But it's worth mentioning, running a few pellets through a new brake barrel first will help get it settled and more consistent. Using 
15.89 grain pellets. It saw 565 feet per second, which is 11.27 foot pounds or 15.27 joules. So, more than enough power for blinking, target work, or indeed pest control. A quick look at the diamond back then before hitting the range. This is very much pistol grip, almost shotgun style, with an all black polymer stock. It has a nice comfortable grip with good grip to trigger placing, certainly for my hands. It's not too short, it's nice. It has a look that has you thinking you're missing a magazine somewhere, but this is simply blanked off and could serve as a rest, maybe. This does come with a front swivel for a strap and a cutaway on the rear of the butt for the other end of a sling. It is ambidextrous and again, very comfortable to use. It has a similar trigger safety and a two-stage trigger. Again, this comes with a starter 4x32 scope and open sights as well. But this one feels a bit more of a blaster rather than a precision rifle. Maybe it's just that shotgun look about it. Well, I'm going to drop a better scope on here for the target work so that I get a feel for the rifle's ability rather than being limited by the scope's restriction. I'm going to fit a budget Hugo, which is inexpensive, but a 4 to 16 with a side focus. That should help. Right, finally, outside, Storm Isha has just happened and we've got the tail end of it and you can hear it blowing through the top, so it's not a perfect day for it, but at least it's dry. Makes a change, believe you me. Right, okay, what have we got? We have the Crosman Mission. I did the Crosman Nighthawk, which was wooden stock, really liked it, very nice gun, simple brake barrel, nitro piston. This is more of a cutaway thumb hole polymer design. There is also the more shotgun looking diamond back, which I actually quite like the look of. I think it's one of those that's going to grow on you. And uh, really what I want to do now is, now we've got some dry weather, get out on the range, shoot it, give it a go. It is the multi-shot, so you simply load up, leave the last one empty, click it in. It's so simple. And then when you're ready, you break that. It's loaded. It's ready to rock. And it's a manual trigger, so you determine it. It doesn't automatically apply it. I've put a Hugo 4 to 16 on the top of this one, which sits nicely. It's a lovely scope. I didn't like the other one. This 4x32, they really are giveaway things in lucky bags, and I'm sorry if I'm offending any companies. I don't mean to but they're not brilliant. They are very plasticky. They will get you out in the guard doing a bit of plinking at fairly short ranges. What we're trying to do is test the gun. To test the gun, we've got to stretch the gun out a bit, in which case I want to be able to see it. And at the moment, yeah, I've actually got this wound up to a full 16 because I'm doing target work. I did try, there's a lot to get through, I did try putting it on the tripod, which is the Rockstad one that I use all the time. Now, the only thing with this, it does have quite a bit of a kick. And I was finding I was really struggling with it, which is unusual because I always use the Rockstar. I swear by these things. Link is in the description below because everybody always asks and they don't know where to find it. But I've actually put it on uh, a bag and I have suddenly got better results from it. So it's obviously, it prefers a bag because there's a lot of movement in it. Watch me say now, I'll have a go and I'll probably miss completely. But anyway, here we go. I'm also using some of the new Apollo uh, reactive targets, which I've got hold of. And they are really nice and they're, they're really good value. Again, the link will be in the bottom. <laughs> if I don't say it, people always ask in the comments. So it's in the bottom. Right, anyway, enough of that. Let's give it a go. I quite like it. Loaded up 10 rounds. I'm actually using 13.43 grain Jumbo RS Exacts. And I must say, I've opened the tin up and there's quite a few that's damaged, which is a bit upsetting, but I shoot what I brung. So here we go. Let's see what we can do. Ah. 
and I didn't even zero this scope in. I put it on top and it wasn't too bad, so I thought we'll just shoot it. It's more like it. I hope you can actually hear that wind. It's quite high up, but there's a lot of it. Not ideal conditions. Not ideal conditions at all. It's enjoyable. It really is enjoyable. It's a nice little trigger, really. It's quite a long first stage. Ah, that's it. It's empty. There you go. This one is the Mission. It's quite nice. I think this is the cheapest of the of the lot. I think. Don't don't judge me and take me up my word for it on that one but putting a half decent scope on it which is a really budget scope the hugo makes it a really nice gun to use the action is really smooth the the 10 round shot hasn't failed me yet a little fiddly to load up but uh, it's not failed at all i personally would take the uh, open sights off the back and use it without because i don't see any reason for actually trying to shoot with open sights if you're on a real real budget then yeah you can do but personally put a reasonable scope on it and this is a good one get rid of that you've got yourself a nice little package you really have enough of that back to the studio these are really nicely balanced to use and the mission is available in 177 and 22 calibers with the diamond back available in just 22 and 12 ball well maybe not the 12 ball bit they are great fun to use and can easily be used for whatever you want them for they aren't expensive at all the mission is around 200 pounds with the diamond back coming in at around 260 pounds uk which for multi-shot rifles isn't a lot of money certainly not to my mind the multi-shot range now has an option for everyone really from traditional wood finish to tactical styles and a choice at that Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to share and click the alarm notification bell. That'll help you get notified when any new stuff comes out. Check out this little lot and drop the AAR On Air website a look at. A big thank you as always to Vector Air for their help. Please don't forget the ancillaries used are in the drop down box below if you want to see the links to them. Not the guns though, YouTube don't like that. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. That's it for this week. Please stay safe and shoot safe, and hopefully, I'll see you all next week. <laughs> Bye for now.